see. I'm not able to pull up everybody. Uh, who, who do we have, President um, Kellyanne? Um, we have Laura Curlis, Kevin, Bro Kevin McGruder, Brian Hausch, Jose Salmeron. I'm sorry, sir. It says Crazy East Side Yellow Springer. <laughs> I don't know what your first name is. Um, Pam Conine. Sorry. That <coughs> Cyprian. Cyprian. Okay. Kate, Kate Hamilton and Florence Randolph and Michael Slaughter is entering as we speak. All right. And I think you got the notice that Chief will is going to make every attempt to join us uh, by uh, 15 after. Oh, okay. I, I heard he was having some health things. Going on. Okay, that's fine. Jonathan, my, my other meeting was, was canceled, so I, I can stay on. All right, okay. And I do want to let you know that I have a conference call that I have to be on at seven. But if this goes over, then I will just mute myself and uh, and video off, and then you guys can continue, um, and um, and then I'll come back on. It should only be like 15 minutes if it need be. Okay. All right. Well, first of all, thanks everybody for participating in this. I know it said uh, judicial equity in Black and Brown community uh, for Yellow Springs, but I'm talking about equity and justice course but that also leads to the incarceration that's going on in this country with black and brown people so um for a start i don't know who's the eldest here but do i have permission to speak and go go forward yes oh thank you i wondered who, was who said this. that i said i should have said that yes <laughs> Brother G, you have permission. <laughs> Thank you. Thank you, Ben. So uh, this is going to go kind of quick, but I promise you, stick around. Everybody will be heard. Um, just wanted to, you know, this, what we're, the thing we're going over today can be, you know, can be invidious. So I'm going to be as anodyne as possible, but not so anodyne that, uh, I'm not saying what the community is saying. Um, so with that, I, I just wanna ask Chief or Josue, um, I've got questions first to go, to go over some preliminary questions that we get them answered, we can go for it. Otherwise we can end the Zoom here and end this whole uh, endeavor, uh, because these questions are pertinent to going forward effectively. Um, Chief, you you know what uh, critical race theory is, or Chief uh, Josue? Having been a student of Antioch or I have been a student at Antioch and studied um, Africana studies and other social justice uh, literature. I, I am familiar with the term and I couldn't, uh, I couldn't give a lecture on it or don't expect me to speak in depth about it um, without any preparation. But what specifically? So just in a couple sentences, what, how you would define it. If, if uh, Jamfi, I'm willing to entertain questions about the work that we do here and how we approach the work. I don't okay. have okay. any specific no, questions about academia. I would rather have yeah, you uh, give me the, send me the questions and give me time to prepare responses. Yeah, no, that's, that's fine. Uh, I'll explain it for everybody. Uh, it's just, it's the, uh, and uh, Kevin, you can help me out. Uh, also, but it's it's the uh, theory that uh, race is a construct and that people aren't biased. It's not necessary. In fact, it's not about people individually being biased against brown and black people. It's about the government being biased against brown and black people. So it's institutional. 
Um, that's that's the basis of it. And the you and and it, the word race is used to set up the platform. Once you get the people believing there is such a thing as race, then you can start discriminating based on racial uh, makeup, the uh, demographics. So uh, did I get that right, Kevin? Yes, that's right. OK. Um, so that's, and then one other question. And the reason you're getting these questions, Josue, is because it's critical that if we don't know these things going for who, I'm not assuming anybody knows anything. Um, that, that's why I'm asking these questions. And Josue, do, uh, do, you, do you believe that there, there's only one race on this planet, the human race? Yes. Okay. And two more questions. Do you think the black and brown community should have the biggest influence over police policy that surrounds policing the black and brown community? I think the communities that are being policed should have the biggest say on, on how they're being policed. So if that's in a community that's black and brown, of course. Okay, that's glad you said that. Okay, that gives me an idea. Uh, Giampi, um, uh, Chief Carlson has joined us. Okay. Chief, we just went over critical race theory. You know what that is? I'm sorry, Giampi, can you repeat that? Uh, do you know what critical race theory is? No. Okay. I'm, I'm just seeing where people are at. Now I know where. See, now I'll uh, offline, I'll go over that so I don't have to back up. That's the only thing you really missed. And do you believe there's one race on this planet, the, the human race? Yes. Uh, and then finally, for our host, Way and Chief, do you think police departments should dictate policy to the brown and black community or vice versa? Josue? I think that depends on what we're, what we're talking about. Uh, John, if we build on the previous conversation, on the previous question where we're saying uh, who gets to inform the policing structure, the communities in which are being policed inform the structure. Now there are procedural things that the that we have to we as a as a as a government we're taking our cues from the uh, law enforcement supervisors. For example, while I am Brian Carlson's uh, supervisor, um, Brian Carlson has a a legal responsibility to report uh, uh, law enforcement activities to the the uh, sheriff and. There are policies that are set by state that we that we follow, that we have to follow, and they're set by the Ohio Revised Code. So there are instances where there are things, procedural uh, policies that we have to follow and that leave um, limited input. Okay, great. So what I'm hearing, and you correct me, is that council as we, we have the uh, innovativeness where we can make our own rules and our own policy in when it comes to the uh, city of Yellow Springs. Yeah, there are there. some limitations. There are some limitations and I, you know, I, I couldn't speak to all those limitations um, but yes, as a as a charter municipality, we have uh, we have uh, autonomy and, and a lot of flexibility in our local laws. Uh, but they also there are constraints. We have to operate within what is possible. The ORC. Brian Hausch uh, is you know has joined and and Brian uh, he's knowledgeable about these things and in his role of council president. Uh, um, has more in-depth knowledge about council operations. I, I didn't in my previous statement I, I make a statement about council and what their 
what they're able to do and not do. I was specifically trying to answer your question about uh, the policy and an input to those policies. Okay. But there are local policies that, yes, that are absolutely uh, possible. And that's what I said, that it depends on what policy we're talking about. There are things that certainly we have, uh, we have discretion and absolute authority to do, but there are policies that come from the state level that, um, that are much more restrictive for us. Yeah. Okay. Well then that's a good segue because now I'm going to get into my, my four, uh, guidelines for village policing, things that I think, from what I've heard, we'll, we're innovative enough, we'll be able to do. And just know that these, um, to try to remember every time anything I'm speaking about is about the black community, because we're gonna be policed different than the whole community. It would be great if we could just police the whole community and everybody would be policed the same. So- I, I, I'm sorry, say that again. Again, Jonathan, you you want the black community said, to be policed differently than all the other members of the community? I'm saying we're being policed differently. So I'm speaking on behalf of the black community in what to fight against what is going on where officers aren't being prosecuted. And if they are, they're getting the re most recent case, unless there's something else that happened since then, is Daniel, Daniel Crude. Daniel Prude did not, you know, uh, I won't go into the details of that. But yes, I'm, I'm saying since for black people, and find me one black people that didn't agree with what I'm about to say. And I'll show you a person that doesn't know they're being taken advantage of. That black people are being policed in a way where we can be maimed or killed and the officer that does that is not being prosecuted so we have a we have a different take on it than white people because we have a different experience with policing i so, i agree with you i i'm uh, yeah, i'm there okay. with you african-americans latinos yeah so, they have a very different okay. experience with policing than affluent white folks, not just on the policing, but also on the result of the justice system and how uh, justice is uh, applied to them and uh, through the court system, so. Okay, so then, yeah, all this on record being recorded and understood, then I know we can go forward with what's, you know, these are just mine. Over Later in the, at the end, we're gonna go over other people, uh, things that they wanna bring forth, that they, they wanna go over that thing what the uh, city government can do for policing the black community and other things. But I just wanna go over that. So when I go over these things, except for my last thing on the word race, which is a universal, everything else is about the black community because for the black community, uh, these things I'm going over, these are demands. I'm not, we're not asking uh, council or the police chief for these things, we're telling you that these are the things that need to get done because it's more than personal for black people. It's existential. This is self-defense. Our lives depend on this. So, and you know, Angela Allen wrote some things out very eloquently in a short period of time. They were demands. Uh, Brian, and I don't know whose decision was, presented them to the community as if they were recommendations. So I'm saying with what I'm presenting today, these are demands from the black community. These aren't asked. I'm not asking, these, these things I'm about to go over, the, I'm not asking the people, black community in Yellow Springs are demanding these things. So just know that um, going forward. John, if, you're, if you have a document, are you able to share that so I can follow along? Oh, yeah. Um, uh, I'm sorry, uh, Laura, can you put that doc document up? The guidelines for village policing, policing philosophy. If Kellyanne lets me um, have the screen. Is there, uh, John Fee, I would love to see you as you're speaking. Is there a chance that- oh, I thought I was. Yeah. I thought I was. Uh, yeah, his no, but, picture but, is 
but if you if you share the screen, it will it will make the document the the screen. I'm not sure how to do that. Uh, I was letting Laura take care of the document, putting the documents up. Usually, you can swipe even though the document is being shared. You can there's an you can see the person's whoever's speaking, and if you have it in speaker view. Laura, have you tried? Because I gave I gave every anybody oh, else sorry. ability to get it. So. Oh, okay. So let me try now. Okay. Sorry. Okay. All right, there it is. Now, on, on my screen, all the speakers are on the right in a stack, so I can see everyone. I don't know how yours is. Okay, so this is what you want, John Fee? Yeah, let's we'll start with number one. Um, uh, like it says, I reviewed the, gui the guidelines for policing and believe some of the premises and language should be changed. The guidelines are, to me, tone deaf to the BLM sensitivities and principles. Number one, the guidelines seem to be written from the point of view police of police rather than the community. Uh, by law, police serve the citizens who pay their salary. The message should be that police should be seeking the support of the community. In other words, right now, what's going on should be how black people are going to be police. I'm speaking to this. If there's other like people that add to this, that should be followed too. Okay, number two, the guidelines for police poli poli policing say at the end, this is the last sentence. Um, I'll have Laura put that up in a minute after I go through this. Um, village leaders, quote, village leaders should consistently seek community support for, for and trust in the YSPD officers through communication and community engagement. So the wording is really not, not reading friendly for a lay person, number one, and it's about three clicks into the whole you know, uh, government website. It's not accessible, uh, easily accessible. Um, so what I'd say, does this mean that the village leaders consistently have to be supportive of, of the police department? Or what should village leaders say and do when the police breach that trust? So, and then I'll go over that last language when Laura puts up the, uh, the actual policy that's current. Uh, okay, number three. For clarification, the villagers must know from council what their role is in policing village. Does council believe that the police set the policy as to how they police or do the police set the policy? And we went over that early with the police implementing what the people want. And if that's not the case, that's what we're here to uh, come up with the resolution to, for that. Um, use of the word race. Now this, this ties into critical race theory. The guidelines that I read for, you know, the current policy use the word race or racist three times. Race, as we went over, is a social construct, an idea ready for the ass heap of history. There is only one race, the human race. We can set the example for this state, not just the country, this county, but the country and the world by not perpetuating the use of the word race as if it is a real thing, thereby stripping it of its socio-political power. I suggest scientific, scientifically neutral language like history of institutional dis discrimination based on skin color instead of history of institutional racism as it says in the police policy. Likewise, instead of anti-racist or anti-racism, I suggest anti-skin color discrimination, or more briefly, my word anti-schism, but it can be also, inter you can also put the word uh, ethnicity in there. That, that fixes everything. Um, because we can either be a part of the problem, we can either be a part of perpetuating 
this misuse of the word race, or we, we just in Yellow Springs alone, just us, we cannot be a part of that. We can decide not to be a part and let everybody else, because yes, it is used widely in academia and, and scholarly work as if it's a, it's a real word. And that's because no one speaks up about it. So that being said, uh, the, there's an attached revision that Laura can put up and I'll go over uh, where the change would be in the writing. This, these, are, these are what I'm demanding being, or this isn't a demand, this is a universal. This is what I'm proposing to change as far as the language and the guidelines for village policing. Laura, you can, you can go ahead and put the, uh, those guidelines. Uh, under de demonstrably inclusive at the, at the bottom there, that's where there we go. You can see all the words where it says race or racist. Um, and that's where I would suggest putting whatever you want, anything but race. Because perpetuating the root, that word is just perpetuating the uh, discrimination against brown and black people. Put them in a, putting them in a, a column. Uh, and I think there was another. Oh yeah, the last, the last uh, sentence. Village leaders should consistently, or no, you can put the uh, the policy, the guideline for village policing back up. Yeah, the last paragraph in the last sentence, village leaders should consistently seek community support for and trust in police, YS police department officers through communication and community engagement. And that's a simple switch of the words. The, uh, the YSPD should consistently seek community support and trust in the community or village leaders through communication and community engagement. And that being said, um, make sure I have. Jumpy, can I ask about the first sentence in that paragraph? It looks to be been a change as well. Hold on one second. Where it says the citizens of Yellow Springs are above the YSPD in village council and the chain of command and council elected by the citizens. Isn't that not a change? In the, in the same uh, paragraph or the one yes, above? Yes, the very same paragraph. It's the last one that, that you just read from. Oh, I'm sorry. What's your question again? Is that not a change? You have it bolded. And that appears to be a change. Oh, that, that's my, I was reading you what it actually says, the current one. Oh. The one you're looking at is the change. Yeah, I'm sorry. I was looking at it the other way. But yeah, the way it's there presented to everybody is how it's, I, I'm proposing it should be. Since the uh, police department works for me and the community, uh, they should be taking how we, because we, we understand how we're being treated. Okay, the black community. So, um, a white person can only have sympathy. They can't empathize. They can say, oh, that's bad treatment. You know, that's, you're treating, they're getting treated wrongfully, but they can't say, oh, I know how that feels. So that's why we demand to be listened to, not listened to, but for this to happen because we, we understand that, police department. And remember, I'm speaking for all the black and brown people. And if anybody wants to speak up and say, no, I don't feel that way, that, that's fine. I mean, I'm speaking for Josue, you're a brown person. Uh, Chief, you're uh, part Lebanese, I think. 
you know. So, but one thing when that also we're careful of in the black community, we're not going to uh, allow people in the black and brown community who, who acquiesce to uh, sensitivities of European culture that don't understand that we are being uh, mistreated and, and we just here to rectify that fine resolution. There yeah. are people there are people who accommodate trust in in white people's resolutions for black people. There are people, but the they are doing so in a way that does not address how to have a resolution. So anyway, can, I, okay, yeah, can I just say so something? The question, yeah, questions, please, please. It's not so much a question. We've had this discussion before in terms of point four. I don't, okay. I don't agree with that. Um, okay. and, and critical race theory doesn't mean you don't use the word race. Um, what it means no, no. is that you look at the way that race has been built into the institutions of the nation. And when you're looking at anything, you look at it with that critical viewpoint. And so if you see racial disparities, you don't attribute those disparities to the race of black people, but you look at the institutions that created it. And so race is a construct, but it's a construct that this world was structured around with black people at the bottom for almost 600 years. And so just eliminating the use of race doesn't eliminate that history that we're a part of. And changing the word, to me, almost eliminates the opportunity to address what's actually happening by naming it and shifting it. That race does not have to be a negative construct. It is, it was created to support transatlantic slavery, which required a justification that black people were inferior. We know that's not true, but we don't have to pretend that we don't see difference. We're calling that difference race. That rate, that term does not have to have a negative attribute. And that's what needs to be undone. And it's different from ethnicity because what black people are dealing with is the way that our connection with Africa, it's not just our skin color. It's the connection with Africa and the transatlantic slave trade that was projected on us as a negative. And we know that Africa has complex civilizations, complex governments, music, philosophy, and all those things were, there was an attempt to erase that. And so that is what is different around, so when we talk about ethnicity, our history is different from Italians or Jewish people or others. And we shouldn't pretend and how we're treated and how we're treated also. But it's different. And so we can't talk about, we can't, we can't suggest that ethnicity describes our experience in this world, the way that we're being treated differently. It's not, we are African Americans. That is, some of us are African Americans. That is an ethnicity. But we're that's not, not the reason for the difference. We're not a race. Period. We're not a race. Period. That's that's where I'm coming from. Yeah, there, there's uh, the black people. Well, and that's that's really where we disagree because that's I mean, money is a construct. A dollar bill is a construct. It's just a piece of paper. But we built up a society that has put meaning in that piece of paper, and that's what's happened around race. And it's been a negative connotation to us. But just eliminating the world doesn't do away with that negative result. We have to no, shift no, the negativity. Different. You're, you're absolutely right. That's not the only thing that's going to help. But at least we can stop perpetuating the mendacity behind the false use of the word. Because 
unless you're saying there is such things as race, and unless the uh, genome society has made a new discovery in DNA that there is races, um, I beg to differ that you're saying no, that, that race is real. And that, so that, that's the only difference. I'm, I'm saying that's what we're using to describe differences. So before 1400, people knew that people in Africa were different than people in Europe. They didn't use the word race, but they might talk about Africans and people from England. And race is standing in for that difference. Yes. But just eliminating that word doesn't mean that we eliminate all of that history. Right, they're, they're describing an ethnicity. So, but these are the, see, these are the things we can come to resolution on. See, that, that, those are the things that we need to talk about, see? Because I understand perfectly what you're saying, but that doesn't resolve that there, the, critical race theory uses, is, is saying that the word race is how to categorize, to get away with making these institutional uh, biases toward black and brown people. They use that word race to get away with it. So I'm suggesting a way to eliminate the use in, the, in that way, thereby taking away some of that power. So I don't know if that makes sense, but you know, it's better than perpetuating what the people who discriminate against black people with the word race, it's better to, to not use it the way they want it to be used than to use it the way they want it to be used, I guess is what I'm saying. Can I interrupt and, and say something? This is Florence. Hey, Florence. Um, hi, I, I agree with what Kevin is saying here. We, we are talking about a word that we want to change the way people use it that we've used for generations. But you got to start with what our definition is in the um, dictionaries and, the, and what we use as a race of people outside of Yellow Springs. Just because we don't use that word race, if we say we're not going to use it, that doesn't mean that when we're speaking with those outside of Yellow Springs that we're talking on the same terms. And I heard you say, Jonathan, those people or they want to use it. You're speaking for yourself and how you feel. You haven't heard how a cop that's a police officer that's black would use that word race or a white I mean, officer might use that word race. So what we hear you saying is this is what you have constructed for the blacks in Yellow Springs, which is not the view of all of us in Yellow Springs. So no, if we no. have a dialogue about this, we're going to have to dialogue with no. on the grounds that everyone has an equal say, no matter what color you are, or no matter what group you belong to. There are a lot of people in Yellow Springs who are of color, who do not agree with you. Okay, and you might speak for them if you'd like, but we can't do that as a race of people. We have we're not a race. We're not a race. We're not a race. <laughs> you might not be a race, but we are a race of people. That's how we're identified. So we can say we're not going to use that word, but because okay. you say that, you can't. No. You can't use the word or the color red because I think it's orange. You can't say that to me. Yeah. No. You can no. Say, Let's discuss how we can come to yeah. a, an agreement of this is how we're going to define it and use it. But you can't tell me I can't use it. It's not. No, 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 no. I'm saying the thing I said that I'm speaking for the black community about is our experience and how we're being policed. I said this number four here on my guidelines. I said that's universal. I know I know black people uh, actually believe they're a race. That's part of the problem. I, I know that I don't speak for everybody when I say but the dictionary term, as you just said, speaks to what I, the truth that I'm talking. If you look up the word race, you will find that there is no, there's a human race, but there is no race. If you look at the genome, the, you know, the DNA that makes up all people, we're one race. Now we have different skin colors, but that doesn't make up a race. So biologically and scientifically and naturally, most importantly, there is no race. So when you say we're using 
the to go when you say to go by the textbook or the dictionary, that's what I'm going by. <laughs> So does that make, does that make sense? Does that make sense? No, the demographic um, race of people in Yellow Springs and the demographic breakdown of the differences of people in Yellow Springs. Do you know that? I'm sorry, I didn't hear you, Lawrence. Do you know the demographics of those living in Yellow Springs? White, Mexican, <laughs> European, <laughs> African American, yeah. Chinese, Japanese. Do you know that breakdown? Yes, you're talking about skin color. Okay, so, now, yes. now, 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 yes. So how would, if you addressed all those people, how would they describe themselves? Would they say, this is my race? With, what would they say? They would either say race or skin color. Okay, so now we're at that point where it might be that if you took a survey of all those people, saying race to them doesn't offend them in any way or dem um, put them in a, a place where they are being discriminated against because of that yes, word. Yeah. <laughs> My goodness. Yes, it does. Once you categorize... Your opinion, and I can have mine, that's, correct? That's... that's uh, I thought this was a discussion about it. This is... You, you, you have a demand here in front of us and no, I have no. This one isn't a demand. Remember this one. The other three are... This is a universal thing. That I'm talking about. I'm just saying the uni the natural. I'm talking about the natural okay. uh, definition of the word. You're you're not understanding me. I don't know if someone else can. I understand explain you it. perfectly clearly of what you're saying. I understand. So okay. you're saying there's a such thing as a as a race. What I'm saying is that you brought this and you said a couple of times you're demanding that we not use the word race. Not you're these. Not I didn't demand this. Not this number four. The other ones were demand. Well, I, can I, I'm, I'm on the outside here. Can I ask a question? I just kind of came into this. So um, have you, this, this is a brand new document, this guideline document for, for the village the policing. When did that, when was that put together? How long ago was this put together? Just, just quickly, I'm just asking. And yeah, my, the one that my, my corrections or, or the well, one? Well, both, both. I'm kind of new to this. I'm just trying to understand, you know, what, what's happening here. You have a Chief. guideline document. You want revisions and yeah. you have a list of revisions, but I don't know. It kind of sounds to me like maybe we need to go off and talk about these revisions. Yeah, I mean, that's, I'm, that's... I'm, I'm new. I'm, I'm on the outside. I'm just listening to everybody here. And it just, it sounds like there's some disagreement and yeah if we're going to present changes we want it sounds like we all need to agree yeah. on the changes yes that's just my point i you know yeah. I'm, well, I'm just reading this so that's am i right I or wrong or does anybody agree or disagree i, I, I agree i agree there's some in-house that in fact i told john to put this on 365 so that we can uh talk about this exact thing because we, we, you know, that that's a, a thing that definitely, as you can see right here, needs to be talked about amongst the black community. So, um, but I, I have a, I'll, I'll uh, let's see if I can find it. This this might make sense to people who do, who don't understand. Anybody else doesn't understand that part about uh, replacing the word racism? I think I think there's a distinction that I'd like to make. It's not that I don't understand. I understand what you're saying. I disagree with it. And no, no, I can't, you. You're not disagreeing with me. You're disagreeing with science. I'm just re, I'm just repeating science. I'm not I, my understanding of science. Now, if you're saying my understanding of science is wrong, that's a whole different thing. I'm, I'm so, disagreeing I'm really with, 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 you're with, not how, with you are, how you are using the knowledge to implement a policy in the world. Yeah. I disagree with that. Okay. And and <laughs> guess what? You're allowed. <laughs> You're allowed. I'm I'm that's why this I'm glad that we bring these things up. Because these are the things that don't get resolved 
and status quo happens. Status quo happens. But in the effort of time, um, this, this, I want to get at least get to the Citizen Review Board and ask anybody else if they have anything they want to add to uh, justice. Because the reason I'm doing this outside of JSCC is because I believe they've lost the spirit of it. And I, I know Black people in the community have told me thus. And I, I rattled off a lot of concerns about that in the, la in the last JSC meeting. And all I got, at least from the males, the females listened and either apologized or came up with resolutions. But when I came up with these concerns from the citizens, they were reduced by Chief and Josue and Brian as complaints so they don't have to deal with them. They didn't come up with any resolutions. They just said, oh, I don't do that. Not me. Oh, I don't do that. Oh, no, we don't do that. I, I, you know, that's not leadership to me. And I don't think that's the kind of leadership the Black community wants. Uh, shuck, you know, shifting blame. And the coup de grace was, Brian said, it's the Black people's fault, Black and Brown community's fault that nothing is getting done in the JSCC. Okay, so I need to, I need to step in at this point. I, I really okay. feel like I need to address some of those issues. So, and I'm just gonna give you a very quick history for everybody who has not been on the Justice System Collaborative Committee since the beginning. So, um, cause I have. And initially when Brian Housh um, had the idea after the young people of the Black Lives Matter movement uh, produced their demands that um, the, the council as well as Josue and uh, Chief Carlson wanted to immediate be able to address those issues and make those changes. And so due to, we had a lot of factors against us. It was September, we had three major holidays coming up. We had um, folks that were dealing with um, COVID and COVID was changing on a daily basis and all of our leaders had to be um, uh, do, you know, doing that. And there was a great amount of work that took place then and continues to take place today in order to create um, an environment that made our um, citizens safe. Then, um, so when Brian and I first talked about it, I have a years of um, uh, project management and I am the one that suggested that we um, create the subcommittees because I realized that for all of us to come together and work on these one at a time, that it would be a very lengthy process before we get anything accomplished. I also am the one that suggested that we look at what I called the low hanging fruit, the ones that we really would have need little discussion about or minimal amount of research, because as a leader and a project manager, I understand that um, people need wins. When you work in a large group like that, that people need to see that they, what they're doing is actually producing. So that's why we started targeting first the what quote unquote the easier stuff to so that we would have some amounts of accomplishments under our belt as we move towards the really hard things that are going to take lots of our time and we're not going to see any movement while we go we go through that and it would enable people to still want to um, come in in their off time and um, and move forward so that's how all the, the this decision how to run this group falls on me so if you have any any issues about that come to me because those were the recommendations that I made for the group and to be honest with you I would stick by them today. I think the fact that we have gone through everything that we have and um, uh, is incredible that we've got done what we wanted to do. So initially I volunteered to be the coordinator of the first meetings. We uh, broke it down into seven into six different sub work groups and each of those had probably six or seven items that were demands that um, we had to look at. So we broke them down into groups 
and um, and I coordinated the efforts of everybody um, of everybody uh, to meet, have those initial meetings, and it was intensive. It was ex extraordinarily time intensive. We had about 25 people at the time, and um, to the point where when I broke my leg at my femur at a Black Lives Ladder movement, I was laying in the emergency room, um, doped up on morphine, scheduled for a surgery, and I was still coordinating those efforts. So we got our first meetings down and I asked in every single meeting of those in attendance, we need people to um, champion this group. And they would basically be doing what I did, coordinating the efforts of the meeting, taking meeting minutes, making sure that, um, that we, we report back of what we've accomplished. And no one, no one stepped forward. So then as, as I continued tr my effort in trying to heal, being bed bound, um, I could finally, I got to the point where I knew that as long as I continued to do it, nobody was going to step forward. So I completely backed out. And I even went onto the council meeting and made my plea to the community for people to please step forward because I could not do, I could not do it any longer. So even after I completely stepped out and refused to do it any longer, no one from the community stepped forward. Um, it was the council, that it, different council members that ended up um, um, stepping forward to take that place and only three of them did. So that meant that three of our sub work groups dropped off. So that's why the only reason now today that those sub work groups are being led by our council leaders is because no one from the community stepped forward and were willing to lead those. We would love people of color within our community to step forward to do those. And as far as Brian Hausch goes in the position that he has in, the, in it, literally all that guy does is he sends out notifications of what the upcoming meetings are and he asks everybody if, what they want to discuss and he puts an itinerary together and then sends it out again asking if anybody wants to change and then during the meetings simply goes down the itinerary and he is more than willing to turn that over to a, to a leader of color within our community if you want to do it he's happy to step down and allow that to be done Okay, and then uh, I have to step in and speak on that. Kellyanne and I had a, I don't know, about a two hour talk about this. And like I said, I can read, uh, I can go down the list as to the answer why no one showed up after the initial engagement. I, I can go all, I mean, they're there, but I don't think they'll be taken seriously. But I, I know why I, the people that I asked in Black community why they, they backed down. Well, I would like to know, what I'd like to know is why you did it. Yeah, well, I, well here I, I am. Don't wanna, I, I, what other people yeah. have told you but is hearsay you, to me. I want to know, I I know question. why you did it. I, I so answered several, that question. Several meetings you, that you came in, asked, so you came asked, in and you remained asked, silent, asked, and you only addressed the meeting in the last five minutes and expected everybody to drop everything <laughs> and to that's address only, you. That's the only time you can. And okay, here, I'm going to go. I'm gonna, and my answer, you, you said, I never, I answered you. And matter of fact, I'm going to let you answer for me. When you asked that question, I said, the answer is going to always be this, Kellyanne. And what was it? Jumpy, go ahead and speak for yourself. Okay, because you asked me that question, but I will speak for the community. I said, these are the things, people in the community, I wrote down the things in the things that they all, there's a theme. And then I said, whenever you or council or anybody asks why people did not participate, say because it is your job. I think, I already told you, I think they're abusing you, Kellyanne. You, okay, you're, doing their, but, you're doing their job. In matter okay, of fact, but, you said, oh, you won't let me, in matter of fact, you said on one of the, you told Josue, I'm tired of doing your job, Josue. 
I was I there. I never when, said that. I was, I oh, never. my. Well, uh, okay. Then my uh, lying ears. Those are my lying ears. Because I, I never, I never that. said that. Well, I heard you say it. I heard you say that. But, do, but then when we spoke individually, you said, yeah, the same. So now. I told you, you exactly my frustrations of exactly what, what I just said. And as far as and as far as as far as your we're do that we're doing their job, it's like look. The bottom line is that these pe these people on our council, they have the job of being council members, and then on top of it, they are required to pick up another three to five commissions or boards. On top mm -hmm. of that, it's a it's a position that pays five hundred dollars a month. And then only Marianne McQueen is the only one that doesn't hold a full-time position. And, and believe it or not, most of them have families that they'd like to be able to do something with at some occasion. So I think that, the, that us ex having expectations that in, in a time of COVID, when we have so much more that we're trying to do and then have their regular jobs that, that they, that, uh, you know, of counsel that they're required, I think is, is, is extraordinarily um, um, unfair of us to expect that. And then on top of that is that, look, we're all in this together. I, I, you know, I've been, I've been in this from the get-go, and I can tell you that I have an uncomfortableness in making decisions for Black people because I've never been Black. And okay. while I might have ancestors that are black and Lumbee Indians, which are mixed race, in this particular lifetime, I've not had to experience that. And what I do know about the black community that I've learned in the last year was that my values are very different because I come from a very different experience. So it makes me feel really uncomfortable to be trying to make decisions for the black community. And that's why we need the black community to come in and, and be part of these communications so that we know and understand that. Eliminating yourselves from any type of communication moving forward is only perpetuating the issue that we have at hand and that's of division. What we really should be doing is, how can we all come together and have community and discussions together so that we can bring an understanding to both sides and move forward at its best for the community in its entirety. Exactly why, myself. exactly, exactly why I bought this together because I knew we would not have this. This is a hard discussion. This is good. I don't know about anybody. Else. This is good discussion. And people can't handle these things because they're putting their feelings above people's lives. Black people's lives are involved here. You know, I'm not that what you just said doesn't move me about that's an excuse, Mary uh, Kellyanne. That doesn't move me. We're here to have these. This is what I'm doing. That's why I called this so that we can have these. But when I presented black people's reasons why they did not come, it was people treated them like uh except for lisa lisa said i'm sorry this is what we should do uh mayor pam she just listened so but the, all the males and i didn't know you you felt that way because but that doesn't move me this is your job you know if you signed up for it don't come saying it's your fault community yeah we abuse you but it's your fault now nah, that that's that that argument is I mean, that, that's not going to move forward with me. So what I'm trying to say here, I'm going to just say a few of these things again. I, I didn't want to do this at the beginning, but one of them was process is obfuscated. Lack of clarity in who makes policy and how. Current government has learned from past how to fix policy setting procedure and, pro and process amongst themselves. Task force policy even uh, approved the draft before the community had a chance to look at it. That's why I'm here because I want to make sure this citizen review board is done right. Uh, another one, no clearly announced time to discuss or have difficult uh, conversation. Uh, another one, when able to na when one is able to navigate uh, an opportunity to actually discuss, they're not given the time. 
discuss to have this courageous conversation that everybody says they want to have. This is good. What we're doing right now, this is good. This is how now we know where people are coming from. Now we can move forward. And I call this, I call this together. So I, that's why I say what you just said, Kelly, and doesn't move me. Uh, whole JSC process seems seem convoluted and controlled from the top. That was a theme that was common amongst a lot of people. Demands were usurped and misrepresented to GACC as recommendations and not demands as they were as Angela laid them out. Uh, council reactionary, anti-human rights, feeling government staff personnel's feelings and cultural sensibilities more important than black and brown life. Initial demands for human rights for equality and justice still currently causing an uproar. I can go on, but those are the things that uh, council scoffed at. Those are real people's real concerns. Those aren't complaints. So that that's where I stand on. Well, I want to be able to give. I want to make sure that, that I'm going to be able to Why in none of our meetings? meetings Nobody ever addressed any of those things. So, so now that they're up there, now you still don't want it. You know that 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 doesn't move me. So, but I want. I called the meeting. I wanted to get to citizen review board, and we at least get that in because I also want other people's input on other things that they want to bring up, not just. So, the, Brian, I have to let you know that Brian House had to leave. He had another meeting at seven o'clock. Um, and okay. I do as well. So I'm going to go ahead okay. and log off. And as soon as my meeting is, is over, I can come back on. But I'll leave this up and going for you folks. Okay, great, great. Uh, John P. Also, I, it's 7 o'clock. I have another commitment to. Okay. Well, those who, who you get the gist, I know you get the gist. And we're going to keep working on this. You know, I'm, I'm, these, these things that I brought up. Now, would other people in the Black community bring up? I would support that too. So if they do, they do. If they don't, they don't. But uh, I'm, I'm one black person that's not going to acquiesce to letting someone else make decisions about how I'm policed. I know that. Shanti, John. if I may, I'd like to ask you one question, which yeah. is you reference the, the black people that speak to you. And I'm just curious how these folks come to speak to you? In other words, are they calling you? Or are they writing you? And how do you get their voice? Oh, I just, I, all the people I, I engage, I, I ask these questions. I say, how do you feel about what's going on? Because, you know, I have a front row, front gallery seat on uh, what goes on in council. You know, whether, whether it's, uh, and, I, and I've seen, you know, I've seen, things, I've seen, time and money wasted on feeling, on feelings. A lot of time, and even amongst yourself. So I, I do these things. I ask people how they feel about that. So that, are these people that are friends of yours? Are they people you come across on the street? Are they people that are in organizations with you? I, I'm just, of course. are there five people? Are there 50 people? Of course, there, there are people in, uh, why is speaking for justice that are afraid to speak? There, there, there are people in 365. I've had conversations. Uh, there, there are people in my drumming community, in my net, in my drumming network that I speak to about these things. All you know, you know, there's only it's only 15 percent. Was it 15 percent? 13 percent black people. So I know a lot of them. So when you, I know people want to say, well, well that's job he's speaking now. <laughs> I, I have a question. Anyway, I'd like to go forward and then so everybody else can bring out what they would like to do as far as policing the black community. Because I want to hear other innovative ideas, not just mine. I didn't call this just for mine to be heard. You know, I, I, I know how to speak up for myself. So real quick, um, Citizen Review Board, the things that I would like to change. And if you could put up that uh, diagram, Laura, 
we can work on the things that I don't understand about it. Too bad host way is off the mic, but that happens because in chief, are you still here? I am, and I did not want to bail. I have a seven that I'm already late for. Um, okay, well, you will, we'll I, do. I, we'll, I, we'll work on this ourselves, um, and then present this later on because uh, I definitely had some changes I wanted to make to this diagram that's been uh, put up as a draft so far. I know well, it's a. I appreciate that. <laughs> um, I just wanted to say one thing. So I've I've been meeting with groups nightly for months. And I think that there is uh, differing opinions in many of these things um, within, you know, the same networks. Um, but what I've kind of found from the law enforcement end of this regarding uh, the language of race is, you know, it, it is a construct, um, but it's also an incredibly real force. And, you know, it's true um, that Technically, it doesn't exist uh, until its creation. It's not a technical. It's scientific. But, There's no technicality in that statement. <laughs> okay, scientifically. Um, but because we as humans have imbued it with so much meaning, it acts as a massive unconscious force in our lives. And, and what that, are we going to do to alleviate that? Just keep the status quo? Keep it powerful? Well, absolutely not. Um, but I think that it's a, it's a time piece and we have to, to figure out our way through the maze in getting there. Um, but I appreciate these direct conversations. I really do. I, you know, I, it, it, I think we get more things done and um, I've told you before, my doors always open and, you know, I would love to continue the, the dialogue and conversations on how we can make this a better place for black and brown people. Um, I've stumbled and fallen over my own words more than I can say. It's a learning curve. Um, but until that realization or I, I, I can create that trust in you that you know that I come from a good place, I just need some guidance, then we can move forward. But I'm not the 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 evil epitome of what this position represents. And um, I appreciate everyone coming forward. Uh, Dr. Magruder, your words were, were very good. And I'm not sure who the gentleman was that spoke and said, you know, these things need to be talked out and created. Um, I said that. <laughs> I'm glad we do this. this. These are the things that people are afraid of. I'm, like, mm -hmm. I'm not concerned about having opposing. Uh, views and opinion. I, I, use, I try to mostly attach mine to science, so I, I'm not so that I'm, I know I'm, I'm coming correct. So well, I appreciate that. I, I thank everyone for their time tonight, and um, we'll do this again soon. Yeah, you. I'll be following up with you, Chief. Okay. Thanks, everybody. Okay. So finally, uh, I want to get to this. Um, but the, the changes on it, I'm going to work with Lisa Krieger and um, others who want to uh, keep working on with this with me. Just email me and let me know. And then I'll know who, who's serious or not. And then I'll, I'll go ahead and uh, make my changes on what city council has already for Citizen Review Board and move it forward if, uh, with the citizens input. If I don't get any citizen input, as we just said, then I'll just move forward with it the way uh, it is, the way that we, we revised it. Because um, I, I think we'll, we'll end it here because I want other people to come in. Um, Luis, are you still there, Luis? Okay. Um, there's a few things that Ithaca, New York mayor did, and I think it's innovative, and I think we can be innovative. Um, some of the things mentioned in this article, uh, like Berkeley, Berkeley, California, they, uh, they don't have armed officers conduct st traffic stops or respond to mental health or homeless calls, those kind of things. Uh, uh, I haven't...
Oh, oh, I'm too bad chief is off. But in Portland, they stopped having police presence in schools. Uh, the long lean criminalization of black and brown youth and the so-called school to prison pipeline. So those kinds of things. So I'm open so I can pass on to city government, to government, things like that. Does anybody have any innovative ideas like that they would like seen in Yellow Springs? And I can move those forward. Nope. Okay. Well, I think, John Fee, I need to think through some of this. So um, I'm sure I can come up with something, but kind of being new on the front end of this, I need to digest some of this. So can I get copies of these documents? Oh, yeah. Uh, you know, I'll okay. give you. Uh, okay. you know, I'll give you. Uh, also, uh, we'll be going over this in uh, 365. Okay. All right, well then it was that, if I didn't hear any suggestions, um, I, I moved to close the meeting and thank you for your participation. Uh, this, these are the talks that we actually had a talk that people are afraid of having. Hopefully we have some more. Thank you. Thank you. All right. Oh.